His Excellency uh, Ambassador Yu Jianhua, uh, Mr. Ricardo Otis, Mr. Nicholas uh, Imboden, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. On behalf of uh, the Institute of uh, World Economics and Politics, Chinese Academy of Social Sciences, one of the organizers of the 2016 Think Tank, Think 20 Trade and Investment Conference, I am greatly honored today to extend my warm welcome to every participant in this meeting room at the World Trade Organization. T20 was initiated in 2012 when G20 Summit took place in Mexico. Since then, T20 has become an integral engagement of G20, together with Business 20, Civil 20, Labor 20, Women 20, and Y20. In November 2015, in Antalya, IWEP, or IWEP, as the T20 leading chair, and the Shanghai Institute for International Studies and the Chongyang Institute for Financial Studies of Renmin University as co-chairs, <laughs> officially appointed by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of China, were handed over the T20 chairmanship from the Turkish think tank, TAPAF. After the T20 series meeting kicked off in December last year, the Chinese T20 chairs, in collaboration with some foreign think tanks or universities, hosted several events focusing on global governance, international monetary system reform, and policy coordination, development financing, sustainable growth. Now we are moving to international trade and investment, the topics which are of great importance to the whole world. A strong, sustainable, and balanced growth is a goal set by the G20. There are various ways to enhance the achievement of this goal, and one of them, among other things, lies in the maximization of the gain from trade and investment, which depends upon the depth of international division of labor and the specialization, and the minimization of the transaction cost, which hinders the expansion of the market size. The main purposes of T20 meeting series is to promote discussions among experts over the challenges as well as uncertainties facing the world, and to stimulate the formation of consensus and the concrete solutions to address them. IWEP is a government-funded think tank that was created half a century ago. There are 130 full-time researchers and supportive staff at IWEP, we, who concentrate themselves on the studies of international trade and investment, international finance, geopolitics, global governance, and so on and so forth. During past several decades, IWEP has played a constructive role in exerting impacts on China's policymaking process by providing ideas and expertise. Currently, our research focus is on the G20 related issues, and meanwhile, in collaboration with our two Chinese partners, we are shouldering the responsibilities to make the T20 function well. Today, we are very delighted to co organize this T20 trade and investment conference here with Geneva-based think tanks. 
the International Center for Trade and Sustainable Development, International Trade Development and Economic Governance Advisory Services Center, in, as in association with Trade Dialogue Series of, of the World Trade Organization. The insightful comments and the policy recommendations from the participants of this conference will be incorporated into the report that is requested to be delivered to the G20 Sherpa, to finance and the commerce ministers, to central bank governors of the G20. Geneva, in many ways, is a perfect venue to discuss the issues like trade and the investment. It is a place where the WTO and the UNCTAD are located. It is a place where a number of well-known think tanks converge on. It is a place where creative ideas and the valuable expertise constantly come up. What we are sparing no efforts to do is to make a better world. Bringing about a pretty improvement is good, but not good enough. Let me conclude by quoting one of the sentences from Confucius, develop and let develop, establish and let establish. Accordingly, we can perceive this phrase as Confucius' improvement and make its realization an ideal goal, not only for G20, but also for human beings. Thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you very much, um, uh, Dr. Chang uh, Yu Yan, and uh, welcome everybody. My name is Ricardo Melendez Ortiz. I'm the head of uh, ICTSD. Uh, it's a great pleasure, really, to be with you this morning to um, uh, open this day of discussions on the G20 and the G20's role and responsibilities on trade and investment. Um, I'd like to first recognize, uh, of course, the, the partnership that we had uh, now for about a year uh, with the co-organizers of this meeting, uh, the, the Institute of World uh, Economics and Politics of the Chinese uh, Academy uh, of, uh, of, so of Social Sciences, uh, the Shanghai Institute uh, for International Trade in Shanghai, as well as the uh, RDCY of Renmin University. Uh, today, we're also in partnership here with what I could call safely, I think, our sister organization, Idea Centered in Geneva. And we will hear from uh, Nicola Emboden, who has been uh, a pioneer of uh, uh, doing serious analytical thinking uh, on WTO matters, particularly from a development perspe perspective, uh, in just a few minutes. So, uh, so welcome. Also, Nicola, and uh, and again, I, I thank you for the partnership uh, today for this meeting. Just a, a very few words because I'll, I'll have uh, some more time later in the agenda. That's how it's been designed. So, so why have we decided to work on G20 and trade? Um, we actually started uh, some of this work uh, back in 2008. Um, ICTSD has uh, organized and uh, made uh, uh, presentations or produced uh, analytical material for the Sherpas or the um, heads of state uh, through uh, the B20, the T20, and uh, other, in other ways. Uh, in, um, in London in 2009, in Seoul, uh, in Mexico, um, and in Pittsburgh, and uh, now um, most uh, recently uh, during the Chinese presidency. Last year here in Geneva, we organized a meeting with uh, ambassadors to the WTO from uh, the previous uh, G20 presidencies, as well as uh, looking forward into the Chinese presidency this year. And it was clear to us uh, at that time uh, that uh, there was um, a very good understanding of what I call the competitive advantage of the G20 um, with respect to the governance of international trade and investment. 
very uh, succinctly put, uh, there is no other instance uh, of governance at the international level where heads of state could discuss uh, questions related to trade, including the complex global architecture of trade and investment that we have today. The kind of discussions that we have in the WTO at its highest uh, sort of instance, again, of governance, the ministerial conference, uh, are by and large and by design uh, and for good reasons uh, circumscribed to the WTO. Uh, while the, the G20 has the possibility of having a much larger pers perspective on uh, what is now a, a very, again, uh, critical and, uh, and crowded, uh, if I may say, uh, space of, uh, of agreements on international trade and investment uh, that complement the WTO agreements. And so now, more than ever, the, that comparative advantage of the G20 uh, should be uh, then uh, seized uh, as an opportunity uh, for countries to help provide guidance on how trade and investment should guide growth going forward. At ICTSD, we work uh, from a concern, a very normative, clear concern on sustainable development. We now follow, obviously, the um, uh, government's decisions uh, with respect to the high ambition of goals that they have articulated in the SDGs and Agenda 2030 in 2015, uh, as well as uh, the kind of uh, challenges that they have decided to meet uh, in the, in, with regards to the question of climate uh, in the Paris Agreement in 2015. Uh, from that perspective, and uh, look uh, looking in detail uh, on the role of trade policies and investment policies, and then the relevance of frameworks uh, to really spur growth, uh, we do find that um, uh, there is a great need for good guidance at the level of uh, G20, particularly an extended G20 that engages with the representative non-G20 uh, parties. And that's why, again, uh, we continue to give attention to, to this instance of governance. Indeed, back in 2009, <clears throat> when the, the leaders of the G20 were uh, defining the, the role of the mechanism, uh, it was decided that it would focus on ensuring that fiscal, monetary, trade, and structural policies were collectively consistent uh, against a, a backdrop of uh, growth that is being called mediocre and, and other uh, adjectives uh, with good reason, uh, growth uh, prospects that have been reviewed downwards now by the World Bank yes, just yesterday, uh, again for 2000. Uh, 16, uh, this uh, uh, imperative seems uh, absolutely uh, current, and, and again, uh, we should, uh, we're, in a way, we feel that we're called to act on it. So that's why, uh, again, we, we like to bring these discussions on G20 and trade to the WTO. We want to make sure that trade and investment remain in the G20 agenda as we move into the German presidency next year and beyond. China has, in a, in a, in a very uh, in a pioneering manner, has proposed and um, then, with the concert of the G20 colleagues, put in, into action a trade and investment working group for the first time. Um, it is uh, now leading uh, uh, towards a ministerial meeting of the G20 uh, in, uh, in a few days in Shanghai. Um, we have been uh, lucky enough to again cooperate with the partners that are organizing the T20 in China, uh, particularly with the Institute of World Economics and Politics, to organize uh, discussions uh, in that context. Uh, uh, last time in Nanjing, uh, accompanying uh, the discussions of the Trade and Investment Working Group. Uh, from those discussions, there's a lot of content that comes back to the WTO that is very important to harvest and capture here in these rooms. And that's what I hope we will be hearing about uh, from the meeting today. So, so again, welcome to, the, to, to this uh, day of, uh, of discussions on G20 and uh, most salient issues on, on trade and investment. Um, I'll turn now to Nicola Bodin for a good uh, uh, for good wisdom to all of us 
from his development perspective, I, I hope. And, uh, and then we will proceed um, to listen to Ambassador Yu, uh, the representative of the China, or China to the WTO, uh, before we go to the next session. So, uh, Nicola, please. Thank you very much, uh, Ricardo. Uh, excellencies, the ambassadors, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, I wish, wish you a, a hearty welcome uh, to all the participants to this important and timely meeting. Idea Center, with its objective to assist uh, lower income countries to integrate to the world economy is honored to be a local organizer and wants to congratulate our friends from China <laughs> to have taken this initiative to have this dialogue. We are living at a very difficult time for the inclusive multilateral system in general and for the negotiating function of WTO in particular. 15 years of negotiations while producing some results did not allow us to achieve the high objectives that we all have agreed upon in Doha. Quite, uh, qu uh, there is very little uh, clear or concrete elements on the table today that let us believe that we can come to an agreement in the short term. Quite to the contrary, major trading nations have developed other means, RTAs, mega deals, plurilaterals, to circumvent the difficulties to find a consensus among the 160 countries. And yet, there is more agreement, actually, than is officially agreed upon in the WTO. First of all, the objectives of the DDA and the necessity to keep development at the heart of this negotiation is not questioned by anybody. Secondly, nobody disagrees that alternative methods of negotiations have to be looked at, although we do disagree of what they might be. There is also a general agreement that, there is, that we need to adapt the negotiating agenda to new developments that have taken place since Doha. And I think everybody agrees that we have to build on achieved results and identify small but significant steps to address the major issues not yet, uh, not yet uh, solved. There is a growing consensus that the approach, the structure, and the content of the trade facilitation agreement might be a good example to follow in trying to solve the remaining issues. Nobody in WTO questions the right of WTO members to advance integration through FTAs, RTAs, etc. But we still have to find ways and means to ensure that those who do not, th those deals do not uh, marginalize member countries who are either not willing or not able to join in such deep integration efforts and to ensure that those deals are not undermining the development agenda of the WTO. WTO has never been the only liberalizing and rulemaking body in the global trade, but it has been the constitution that defined the principles which have been followed by all other fora. Given the size and the content of the new deals, WTO risks to lose its centrality. If WTO is unable to adapt its rule and to make new rules to make sure that it corresponds to the needs of the market, it will have no future. And it is the G20 that will define the future role of the WTO and its relation to other negotiating fora. After all, it is the dissent among the G20 that has blocked the negotiations up to now. However, the G20 can only fulfill its objective if it is sensitive to the other members of the WTO who are actually the majority. Blair agreements that can be imposed on others are a thing of the past, even if we change the participants of such an agreement. 
It is therefore essential that in our deliberations we take into account the aspirations, the needs and the legitimate objectives of those who are not at the table, especially the poorest among us. Organizations such as WTO need a leader. However, a leader has to have certain characteristics. He cannot impose its opinion on the rest of the world. First of all, it has to be a major trading nation to have the necessary weight to lead. Secondly, it has to lead by example. It has to be ready and able to commit to reforms because it is convinced that those reforms are in its own interest. And thirdly, it has to understand and be sensitive to the objectives and constraints of the other members. China, which has today the presidency of the G20, fulfills these requirements. It is one of the largest, if not the largest, trading nation. It has still a lot to give in terms of opening up its market, and it is aware that it is in its own self-interest to undertake those reforms. And last but not least, it is both a major trading nation and a developing country, and therefore able to understand the needs, constraints, and objectives of developed and developing countries alike. China, together with the G20, therefore has a major responsibility for the inclusive multilateral system in the coming years. For the sake of all of us, let's hope that China and the G20 will take this responsibility seriously, put short-term gains behind longer-term development goals, and show the necessary flexibility and ingenuity to work as an honest broker of a consensus which would allow us to progress in establishing a rule-based and fair global system adapted to today's world. Let us all work hard to propose to China and the G20 ways and means on how it can organize a successful presidency of the G20 and lead the G20 to lead the process in the negotiations at WTO. Thank you very much. Now let me uh, invite His Excellency Ambassador Yu Jianhua to deliver a keynote speech. Thank you very much, Dr. Zhang. Good morning, uh, distinguished guests, uh, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, you see, we usually come to this room to discuss uh, the draft statement of APEC. This time, you come to exchange views on G20. I hope today's meeting will be as interesting as we had in the previous discussions in the context of APEC, sometimes a very direct, blunt uh, uh, discussions. I hope uh, uh, you will. At outset, uh, uh, let me take the opportunity to thank all the organizers uh, for their hard efforts and the hard work uh, to make today's uh, conference uh, possible. There are uh, Institution of World Economics and uh, Politics, IWEP, China, Chinese Academy of Social Sciences, CAS, Shanghai Institute of International Studies, SIIS, Chongyang Institute of Financial Studies, Renmin University of China, and uh, the Secretariat of the WTO as well as International Center for Trade and uh, Sustainable Development, ICTSD, International Trade Development and Economic Governance Advisory Services Center, IDEAS Center. Thank you. It gives me a great pleasure to participate in the 2016 T20 Trade and Investment Conference here in Geneva today. Today's meeting is held at the right time when there are less than 100 days count down to the G20 Hangzhou Summit in September. As the host of this year, China has been working hard with G20 members and preparing a series of significant outcomes 
including those on trade and investment. In this regard, <coughs> T20, as important components of G20, is uh, contributing the wisdom and providing analytical depth to the ongoing G20 discussions. This is uh, well exemplified <coughs> by today's theme, which is closely rela related to the theme of this year's G20 summit, which I quote, towards uh, innovative, invigorated, interconnected, and uh, inclusive world economy for INS. To inspire today's discussion, I would like to share with you China's perspectives on trade and investment, brief on the latest development in G20's trade and investment agenda, and finally highlight the unique role that T20 can play in helping, in helping G20 to achieve its goal. G20 needs a robust trade and investment agenda. The G20 summit mechanism was initiated at the height of the global financial crisis in 2008 to put the global economy back to its feet. Through the coordinated and the dynamic joint actions taken by all the G20 members these years, G20 has become a premier forum for global economic governance. The successful track record of G20 members proves that in a world of deepening economic globalization, it is not only possible but also indispensable for countries to further strengthen international economic cooperation and coordination. Currently, there is a growing concern over the persistent decline in global trade growth to levels below the global growth rate in the past five years. According to the statistics released by the WTO last month, growth in the volume of world trade this year is expected to remain sluggish at 2.8%, the same as in 2015. Protectionist measures in trade and investment have been rising significantly. At the same time, profound changes are taking place in global economic governance system and the rules. Doha round negotiation has been dragging on for years, while the bilateral, regional, plurilateral trade negotiations have flourished. As the UNCTAC report shows, as the UNCTAC report shows, there is a spaghetti bow of over 3,000 bilateral investment agreements. This means two things. The first is that such a situation has promoted global trade and investment liberalization and facilitation to such an extent that trade has a much bigger role to play in the world economy, and the trade and investment are getting intertwined in the close manner more than ever. The second is that it also results in increasing fragmentation of international trade and investment governance regimes, in particular when the mega RTS or polylateral negotiations run the risk of being dominated by the major countries. Faced with such a mixed scenario, we need to look at trade and investment issues from the panorama view of global governance. First, global problems call for global solutions. In the waves of global economic crisis, we were in the same boat. We were in the same boat uh, back in 2008, and uh, we are in the same, still in the same boat in the post-crisis era. We are joining hands in seeking common solutions. Second, it is imperative that G20 has to transit from two wheels of financial and fiscal policy to the troika of financial, fiscal, the third pillar will be third wheel, or we say trade and investment. 
third, particular attention has to be paid to the important role of trade and investment in global economic growth, generating in employment and uh, encouraging innovation. We need to coordinate actions taken at the national level. <coughs> G20 trade and investment agenda is proceeding smoothly this year. For G20 this year, China has identified priorities in trade and investment areas from strengthening the G20 trade and investment mechanism to promoting global trade growth, from supporting the multilateral trading system to promoting global investment policy co cooperation and coordination, and promoting inclusive and uh, coordinated global value chains. The G20 Trade and Investment Working Group has been established and convened two plenary sessions early this year, complemented by a an informal meeting held in Paris just last week. <laughs> Those efforts have built upon more consensuses and get major deliverables prepared by the G20 Trade Ministers meeting to be held in July and Hangzhou summit in September. First, on strengthening trade and investment mechanism, G20 members have agreed on working groups' terms of reference while which will provide a stable framework to guide G20 trade and investment cooperation in a comprehensive and institutional manner. Second, on promoting global trade growth, G20 members are working towards a G20 strategy for global trade growth. The strategy identifies and identifies concrete actions to promote trade growth in the foreign areas, such as reducing trade costs, boosting trade in services, enhancing trade finance, promoting e-commerce development, so on and so forth. Third, on supporting the multilateral trading system. <coughs> we believe that G20 can provide political guidance to the WTO, and the WTO in turn can help G20 better design and deliver its outcomes. That's the, the, the purpose this meeting serves, I believe. We are close to reaching consensus on issues such as uh, fighting against, against uh, protectionism, ensuring consistency of RTS with the multilateral trading rules, and urging all G20 members to rectify the trade facilitation agreement, TFA, in a timely manner. We continue to, dis to discuss challenging issues, such as the WTO post Nairobi work and the possible new issues of great interest to business communities. Fourth. On promoting global investment policy cooperation and coordination, G20 members are now working on a set of non-binding guiding principles to guide global investment policy making. Fifth, on promoting inclusive and coordinated global value chains, G20 members are developing a capacity building action plan to assist SMEs and developing countries better integrated into global value chains. WTO and uh, T20 could play an important role in the G20 agenda. In order to better lead global governance, G20 needs to have a mutually supportive mechanism, fully and effective coordinating and interacting with other international organizations, B20 and uh, T20, that is one platform, G20, with the three pillars, B20, T20, and the international organizations. Of course, we have uh, many other 20s, like uh, Women 20, but I believe uh, these three pillars are more supportive uh, with the, uh, the long-term uh, 
and the prominent ideas from T20, uh, from the evolving and the, uh, and the strong interest uh, from from B20, with the full-fledged participation and the support from international organiza organizations, G20 can be much more strong, stronger, more balanced, and uh, sustainable. Because uh, you see, three pillars will be more balanced than the two legs. I, I hope so. <laughs> Several international organizations are closely involved in the G20 agenda, including the WTO, OECD, UNCTAC, IMF, World Bank, ITC, who are giving their continuous support and uh, valuable inputs. We highly appreciate the unique and the dynamic role that WTO Secretariat has been playing in the G20 trade and uh, investment agenda, particularly for their staunch support to China for this year's G20 trade and the investment uh, deliverables. We have the honor to invite the DDG of the Secretariat to come into this session. We commend the ice-breaking efforts from the DG in launching a series of trade dialogues with the stakeholders to discuss their concerns on trade-related mat matters. We are glad to see that 60 business leaders came to Geneva last week or, be, or week before to discuss challenges and opportunities they face in conducting trade operations and outline how the WTO can help in dealing with them. The high-level event for business community is the first of its kind to be held at the WTO. Since China took over G20 presidency last December, we have been working closely with the T20 by consulting with them and seeking their inputs and suggestions. We are deeply impressed by the T20 tireless efforts in contributing to the G20 agenda. We note with gratitude that T20 has held this year a series of seminars, joint workshops, and conferences around the world. As the trade engine for growth has been weakening and Doha round has been lingering, T20 has a much bigger role to play and could provide much needed intellectual support to the G20 members, which will in turn helps it help shape the future of the WTO. There are a bunch of questions in, in this regard where the T20 can contribute food for thought, food for action, for G20 and the WTO, for example. How to advance the remaining Doha issues while deal with the new issues like e-commerce, investment, and SMEs. How to revitalize the WTO negotiating function while optimizing the different negotiation approaches. How to provide a more reassurances to the developing members in their industrialization and integration into global value chains. How to balance the protection of investment, the facilitation of investment, and the promotion of sustainable development. These questions are pertinent not only for academic study, but also for the policymaking and the global economic governance. Dear colleagues, friends, as the Chinese saying goes, we have many Chinese sayings. When, yeah, this is only one of the millions. <laughs> when playing the chess, think before you move. Of course. With so many influential experts gathering here today, I'm fully confident that your discussion will help determine the moving direction of global trade negotiations and shape the future of the WTO. Here, I would wish today's conference a complete success and our T20 colleagues a nice stay in Geneva. I thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ambassador Yi Jianhua, uh, for your 
uh, a keynote speech. Now we move on to uh, session one.